Good morning, everybody. My name is Joey Bertoni, and this is my YouTube channel, Bertoni Motors, a place where I can talk about cars and motorcycles and basically anything with an engine. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about my 2019 Ram 1500 4x4 Bighorn truck. Um, I've had this truck now for about two and a half years, and I've actually gotten to the point where I have to turn the truck back in. I've been prolonging my two-year lease month by month, and now I've gotten to the point where Stellantis, FCA's new name, uh, will no longer allow me to do that. So I want to go through my experiences, the highs, the lows, about this truck over the last two and a half years, over about, about 25,000 miles or so. So let's get into it. So when I originally bought this truck two and a half years ago, I had a video that basically went through the Moroni sticker, and that's like the sticker, the window sticker, on everything that I selected on this vehicle when I picked it up. But some just brief things that, I, that are included on this truck, right? So the truck is Ram 1500 uh, Bighorn 4x4 with a 5.7 foot box, um, 4x4, and it started about $42,240. From there, I added the black paint, 100 bucks, um, premium LED, package front and rear that's $995, the black appearance package, which is basically the black wheels, black grill, uh, black mirror caps, things like that, that's uh, $1,895, and then what else? Level two equipment group, so the level two is the like, park sensor front rear, it's the big screen in the middle of the truck, things like that, black tubular side steps, those are nice, I'm not the tallest person out there if you know, so it is nice to have those. Those are $695. And what else? Night package, $1,500. The real, I have the wheelhouse liners for $195. And then the destination charge of about $1,700 for the truck is built. So all that for grand total, about $1,500 or $51,000. One of the categories I wanna talk about is performance because this question gets asked a lot and I honestly, I don't understand it. Um, the question is, why didn't you get the V8 in your truck? I don't think there was a need for it. Um, I wasn't going to be towing a lot. I towed a few times, but it just didn't seem like the, the necessity of spending the extra $2,500 for that engine, knowing that my fuel economy would ultimately suffer along, those, along that time, right? While it does sound much better, and I've gotten the opportunity to drive a few trucks with the Ram V8. It's a wonderful engine, absolutely wonderful. And I've gotten the chance to drive the TRX for a few weeks. That engine's fucking batshit crazy. Um, and outside of just having the dual exhaust out rear, I didn't see, I didn't see the necessity of upgrading to the V8. Um, there has been only like one or two times just basically merging onto a freeway while I'm towing my drift car, my BMW E36, that I wish I had a little more power, but once you're up to speed, there's no issue whatsoever with this engine. That being said, the Eco Diesel was not an option when I chose my truck. I come from a family of diesel trucks and I, I have a soft spot in my heart for them, right? I really enjoy the sound, I really enjoy the power, the smell, everything that comes along with a diesel engine. And while I probably wouldn't have elected to choose that either, I would have thought harder about going the eco diesel route versus the V8. If I were to get another Ram truck, I would probably go with the eco, eco diesel just because the reviews of it have been nothing but just extraordinary. So I moved to the inside of my truck because I think it's really important to talk about how comfortable this truck is. It's honestly one of the more comfortable ride, driving experiences I've ever had. And having passengers in the back, one of the first things that they say is like, wow, this truck is quiet, it's comfortable, um, the seating position is really nice, the amount of leg room in the rear is just, it's insane. Um, one of the small things that I like to tell people about this truck is, once again, I'm not the tallest person out there, I'm like 5'10", but if you put the seats up in the rear, I can lay back there and sleep. Um, I've gone camping a few times where I'm like, ah, I just don't want to set up a tent. I've been able to just lay back there with a sleeping bag and a pillow and I am good to go. Um, what else? Let's talk about like the driving position, right? These seats are very well padded. They're comfortable padding. They do a good job bolstering on the sides. They keep you kind of upright and not sloshing around when you're going around a corner or anything like that. Um, leather steering wheel, it's padded. It's very comfortable. Um, I think one of the things that, I, that really stand out to me for this vehicle is 
the heated seats and heated steering wheels. I feel like no matter what time of the year, my heated seats are probably on. It's just something nice about it, you know? It's like getting a nice little massage or something as you drive around. Um, AC's on, heated seat's on. It's just kind of like that. For a truck, usually in large vehicles, you kind of get quieter rides because they have the ability and the money to make them quieter with foam and padding and things like that. But usually trucks don't get that luxury that bigger like BMWs and S-Class and things like that get. It's an extremely quiet ride in this truck. It's very nice. Um, I've ridden in other trucks basically the same year where you can't really hear the sound system. You can't hear people talking. It's a very loud interior noise, but in this Ram, it's, it's wonderful. Um, as for the suspension of the truck, I elected to not get the four corner air suspension. Once again, I wasn't towing and I didn't see the necessity of getting that suspension, um, but I've had no complaints whatsoever with the stock suspension. I think it's held up just wonderful. Now, as for the level of refinement, as you guys know, Ram Trucks has done a lot over the last 10 years as they like separated themselves from Dodge, became their own brand, and really focused on the quality of their vehicles. And in this truck, this model year, um, in the DT, um, which is the model name for the truck, they've done an amazing job really elevating the old truck that was full of just hard plastics and stuff like that, right? They're really trying to be more of a luxury vehicle brand, trying to take people away from the larger SUVs like Escalades and uh, more expensive minivans, things like that, um, Ford Explorers, Suburban, stuff like that. So with that, they basically covered this interior with you know nice plushy leather nice textured surfaces surfaces um even here it's plush on the dash which they didn't have to do since no one touched that that being said a lot of my friends are designers car designers and they like to investigate vehicles that i get into and they find they find things that squeak a little bit um i think most vehicles in this price range are going to have a little panel on panel squeaking um nothing to worry about whatsoever. I think the refinement of this truck is next level, especially compared to some of the other vehicles in the market. While it's pretty common for most vehicles now to have either Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, this is the first vehicle that I've had with Apple CarPlay, and it is absolutely stunning how easy it is and how well Apple did to add the UX system into Ram's screen. Um, as you guys can see, I got the 8.4 inch screen and not the large 12.4 inch screen. Um, I've had a few trucks at my availability that I've been able to drive with it. Um, one of them was the TRX. Uh, the other one was a V8 uh, with the e-torque of the Rebel. And while that screen is really nice and really big, I felt like this 8.4 inch screen was better suited for my my needs and my taste. Um, I think it's a simpler concept with having one versus having basically it's like two screens within one. Um, I, I don't like screens. I'm trying to trying to get away from the screens. And this has everything that I need. So the majority of the time it's based in Apple CarPlay, but under the controls, you can change, you know, heated seats, um, backup cam, all of that. That's really nice. Um, all of the Uconnect apps, which some of them are, they're not really apps per se. They're basically just what you have the ability to look at. Um, climate control, I have nothing on right now because my truck's not on or else I wouldn't be able to do this. Um, media and then the actual normal radio, which doesn't really have, doesn't really get a lot of use. Um, one thing that I want to talk about that wasn't really a Ram specific issue, but it was an issue with the vehicle buying process or the vehicle owning ownership process was for the first year that I owned this Ram, I had a one year subscription to Sirius radio. I never used it. I didn't really need it. I had Spotify and Spotify is what I've been using for the better part of a decade. Um, when I got out of my one year contract with them, like I basically stopped, I got multiple calls and multiple pieces of mail every single week for almost eight months asking if I wanted to rejoin Sirius. It was probably one of the most aggressive, aggressive campaigns I've ever got for them to do that. I was just blown away with what they were doing. 
as we continue to talk about technology, I think it's really important to talk about how many USB and USB-C and traditional like 12 volt plugs there are in this truck, right? So there's two USBs right here and two USB-Cs. And then into the big center console, there's another 115 volt um, traditional plug, like one that you have in your house. In the back, there's an additional two USB, two USB-C, and plug. They are everywhere in this truck. And I think there's another one here in the center dash as well, somewhere, somewhere in here. Um, lots of USB-C. So you never have to worry about getting continuing to charge your, uh, your devices. I think having the actual wall outlet was one of the, it was a thing that I never really thought I needed until I went on a road trip and I needed to charge my laptop, right? Just being able to plug that in, charge your laptop, it was very, very nice. It was a great, it was very convenient. Um, I do know a few people who kind of, I wouldn't say they abuse that outlet, but fun story. They basically, they lived in St. Louis and they went back and forth to Denver a lot. And every time they would do that, they would plug in a uh, crock pot of chili, which seems extremely dangerous. Um, and it would cook along the seven hour drive. I think that's pretty funny. Um, in addition to the USB, there's also the CD drive, like a traditional CD. I've never actually used it, and it took me about a year to realize that it was there. It's basically underneath this, and when you sit in your driving position, you kind of don't really see that it's there. Um, in addition to that, there are two little slots for your phone, um, basically to sit up, um, and then there's like a little indent underneath where the cable could fall to make that a nice experience. Um, and the Ram Rebel and the TRX that I drove, um, there was a Bluetooth, or not a Bluetooth, the, what's it called? Oh, it's starting to rain. The, when you place it down and it automatically charges. I don't remember what it's called, but you guys know what I'm talking about. So that would have been really nice. Um, then you would have to use Bluetooth and not the USB charge, or the, not the CarPlay with the cable. So there are pros and cons of that, but it's nice that you have multiple devices. You can always just throw one there and it's good to go. Um, one more thing on cruise control on technology that I think it's really important to point out is cruise control and how easy it is to set on this truck. Basically you hit a button, you tell it what speed to go. And if you're not going that speed, your truck will get to that speed and it will stay at that speed. Um, I did not get the adaptive cruise control, which I think is a really interesting piece of technology. Unfortunately, I didn't, I didn't need it. Um, it didn't come in my truck, it didn't come in the Tech 2 package, so it wasn't something that I've actually had a lot of experience with, but being able to quickly speed up, quickly slow down just by touching a button a few times, it's been nothing but, it's just super easy to use. So the EPA suggests that this car with the V6 engine 4x4 gets 19 in the city and 25 in the highway. And I just want to show you guys like what my average has been over the last, let's see, do I have to start my car up? I think I've got to start my truck up. for it to actually see. So 19.6 miles per gallon, um, and I believe that trip info is over 30,709 miles. So that's towing, that's trip down to the south part of Ohio, and that's just some city driving uh, in general. But about 19 to 20 miles an hour, or 20 miles per gallon, that's not too shabby. So one of the best features of this truck is just this large bin in the center. Moves up, you've got space for your cups. These fit normal. Um, my Nalgene bottle usually sits in here and I kind of like squeeze it there. Um, multiple ways of opening this. Guys, nice Easter eggs, bunch of math and science and stuff. Sliding this forward, you have access to everything in this rear. Um, usually I have, you know, knife, stuff like that. Big things in there push that back, have all of that access, and then this folds down as well. And then you have access to smaller things like that. I just usually keep paperwork, my key, things like that. In addition to that, you've got two glove boxes, which are really nice. You've got like a small glove box, and then you've got the big one. The big one, I basically just keep all of the paperwork that comes with the truck. And this top one I carried, I don't know what that is, I carried a uh, 
like my extra set of like lock and keys in case I needed to do anything like that. I carried some like Advil and just small things like that. Nothing of nothing huge, but it's really nice. Um, nice rubber so it doesn't slide around back and forth. I think one of the more practical uses of this back seat, and it's just spectacular, is just when you fold it up, how large it all becomes, right? Super easy, you just push it up, both sides, boom. Now you have all this extra space back here. And like I said before, right? One of the best things, like I'm not the tallest person out there, but I can lay the back down here with ease. I've camped over here a few different times. It's been wonderful. And then on both sides, we have these ram bins, which I'll show a video of it now. Um, I basically kept my tie downs, rope, anything harness, anything like that that I need constantly in a truck just to have, they always go there. Like my first aid kit, my tools, they all just stay there. Uh, my truck doesn't have the RAM boxes, which are on the back fender of the truck, or like the side, like side panel. Uh, I wish I kind of had that, just for additional storage, things like that, but something like that. Then pushing it back down, boom. I also have this nice little armrest. Small thing, but I think it was really interesting because I was blown away the first time I looked at it. There are not one, not two, not three, not four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, but 10 cup holders in this truck, right? There's two in the front, right, uh, the front passenger door, one in the rear passenger door, two in the rear center console, two in the front center console, and then two and one. 10, 10 cups, you, so everyone basically in your car can have two cups. It's pretty great. So a lot of people ask me about insurance and how much it costs for to insure this vehicle over the time that I've had possession of it. Um, it's roughly about $135 a month, so about $1,600 a year. And over the last two and a half years, I've spent about $3,800 just to insure this truck. Um, looking back on things, I it wasn't worth it. Um, I hate that we have to get insurance and then at times if your car gets broken into, it doesn't make sense to get them involved. All of that, it's just, just a situation in itself. But 30, what is it? $3,800 gone by, I'll never see it again, but I had to have it to get this car, this truck on the road. And as we just talked about insurance and how much it costs to insure this truck and my vehicle being broken into, I wanna talk about that, right? That is a cost that was associated with my truck during the two and a half years that I owned it. So I wanna bring it up now. My truck was broken into twice in Michigan, um, both times in the, basically the same spot in downtown Detroit. Uh, it's very common for these trucks to be broken into, basically all vehicles coming from Stellantis. So that's, you know, Dodge and Jeep and Ram, but especially Ram and Dodge. They are very easy to basically take the front uh, plastic cladding off the dash and take the, the screen. Really easy to do. They say they can do it in about eight minutes. I believe it. So the first uh, incident cost me about $2,200 cash out of my pocket. They threw a brick through the rear window, uh, got in, scratched a bunch of things. The brick obviously went down the paint and scratched that up. They tried to get it into the dash, but they were unsuccessful. I think they got spooked and they got away. They didn't take anything, got nothing. Um, I honestly wish that they did steal something to make that worth the hassle that it really was. Second time, I don't know what, I don't know how that happened, but the mirror on my right, uh, right door, the glass was basically plucked off. And along with that was the motor associated with uh, the adjustment, the adjustment motor. So in total, that was like $450. So we're talking about almost $2,800 worth of things that I had to fix that insurance did not cover. And they could have, they could have covered it uh, if I wanted to bring it to them. I asked them specifically, I was like, you know, it's not a huge ticket item. It is something I want to talk about how would this affect my insurance rate moving forward? And they said they couldn't tell me. They were like, you know, your insurance could go up next year because your truck has been broken into twice. It's a shitty situation, but that is where we are at with insurance and vehicles. It's a complete scam until your car is basically totaled and then it pays for itself. But, and then outside of those, the other cost associated with this truck was just about 100, I think it's like $180 worth of oil changes, getting my tires rotated, small things like that. Um, most of that stuff is already covered with Ram's warranty. So you basically just have to pay for oil changes.
while owning this truck, there were, I think, five or six recalls needed to be done for the truck. Nothing major, a seat belt malfunction on the passenger side, um, something with the rear passenger door not locking all times, small things like that. Uh, um, all of them, I will, I'm gonna put them up on the screen right now so you guys can briefly see them, but when I took them in to get my oil changed, everything was done, fixed, cleared up, no issues at all. So let's talk about it. I've just told you the ups, the downs, the cost, everything associated with owning this truck for the last two and a half years. And the final question is, would I buy it? Would I, would I recommend it? Would I, you know, is this a good vehicle? And I'm going to tell you that, you know, I originally had this lease for two years and nothing has come up that has made me want to turn it in, right? I've gone month by month with Stellantis for the last six months. And now I'm at the point where they will not let me do it anymore. They're like, you can buy it or you gotta get out. I'm not in the position right now to buy this truck. I've got another vehicle coming in the next few months, so I don't need this vehicle. That being said, it's, it's a really sad moment this weekend, knowing that I, you know, I already did my last road trip with this truck. I only have a few more days with this truck, and it has been, it's been a wonderful truck, like a truly wonderful truck. I've had nothing but great experiences with it. It is probably, for bang for the buck, one of the nicest vehicles on the road. It does everything, it does everything well. I've really enjoyed it. Um, I think Ram has an amazing product on their hands. I think the competition from Ford and Chevy is very strong. I think the truck market right now is, you know, it's, it's, it's a very interesting, a very hot market, right? Ford sells so many F-150s every year and Chevy and Ram have had to do a lot to really up their game to get to the quality and the performance and durability and all of that that you can get in these trucks. But this is, and this is a spectacular truck and I'm going to miss it. You know, I've, like I've said, I've had the ability to ride, drive the TRX, I've had the ability to drive the uh, uh, Rebel with the V8 and they're all great. Every single thing that Ram makes right now is a, is a beautiful truck. I have not got to drive the Power Wagon yet. I would love to drive the Power Wagon. That's my dream truck. And you know, that's something that I might upgrade to in the next few years. Um, while I, originally I thought this was a big vehicle, it's definitely gotten smaller and I get more comfortable driving it, all of that. So maybe a power wagon or a 2500 is something down the road, but for right now, the 1500 was, was wonderful. I'd highly recommend it, um, especially if you know, live in a place that isn't going to have uh, break-ins or things like that. Your insurance is definitely gonna be much cheaper than my insurance was. Michigan is known for having expensive insurance, which is just insane. Um, buy the truck buy the truck. My only thought is if I was to buy this again, I'd probably buy the Rebel. So there's the big horn and then the Rebel variant. The Rebel variant has uh, thicker tires, I think 32 inch tires, a little higher of a lift. Um, and it's just more off-road capability, things like that. I just like the look of it a little more than this. This is a very streamlined kind of truck. The Rebel has that like machismo aggressive look, not quite to the level of the TRX and the Power Wagon, but just a little more aggressive. So that's it for now, guys. I really appreciate you watching this. You know, this is, I don't do a lot of car reviews, truck reviews, things like that. But when it's something that I own, I feel like I have a lot of grounds to speak on. And I think it's important that you guys get an understanding, you know, the vehicle that I've had to use over the last two and a half years to do a lot of the hobbies, motorcycles, cars, drift cars, things like that, this truck has allowed me to do it. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already liked that, like this video, subscribe to this video. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. You know, I'm here to help out with my experience so far. So, thank you guys.